thyroid is the regulator of your entire existence. The thyroid gland regulates metabolism, which can really be seen as systemic energy production. If you aren't producing energy efficiently, this is where we find all of the problems of life. When your hormones are properly balanced and you have enough thyroid, this is when life comes natural. Action comes from second nature, and the flow of energy is not only maintained, but expanded upon. With adequate stimulation, thyroid is synthesized to increase the metabolic rate. In deprivation, stress hormones rise to oppose the thyroid and lower the metabolic rate. This is an adaptive mechanism, but if upregulated chronically, it will lead to decay. Essentially, low thyroid function can be seen as an impaired flow of energy at all levels of life. The main role of thyroid is to allow your cells to convert glucose into ATP, CO2, heat, and water in the presence of oxygen. Thyroid also helps to convert cholesterol into the downstream steroid hormones, most notably pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA, which are three youth hormones that reinforce energy. Thyroid is also involved in the synthesis of bile acids, which support digestion and reinforce metabolism further by aiding the liver and gallbladder. Thyroid is measured in grains, with one grain equating to approximately 12.5 micrograms of T3 or active thyroid hormone and 50 micrograms of T4, the inactive form. The thyroid gland produces approximately 4 grains per day and since T4 is converted into T3 in local cells and tissues, Ray Pete approximated that about 3 to 4 micrograms of T3 is actually produced per hour. When thyroid hormone and carbon dioxide are deficient, glucose is inefficiently oxidized, leading to inflammation, insulin resistance, buildup of cholesterol, soft tissue calcification, and an overall inability to oppose stress. This is known as hypothyroidism. The most common symptoms of hypothyroidism are fatigue or low energy, feeling cold, dry skin, hair loss, constipation or diarrhea, water retention, brain fog, anxiety, depression, and weight gain. Since the symptoms of hypothyroidism are so broad, this is one of the reasons why hypothyroidism often goes undiagnosed. Dr. Broda Barnes is one of the first physicians to recognize this and wrote about it in his book, Hypothyroidism, The Unsuspected Illness. Barnes found that treating patients with supplemental thyroid hormone could often resolve nearly any of their health issues. The diagnosis for hypothyroidism has faced a lot of controversy throughout the years, but Broda Barnes and Ray Pete both believe that the temperature and pulse are most accurate. Upon waking, temperature should be around 98 degrees Fahrenheit and rise to around 98.6 in the middle of the day. Pulse should also rise and be approximately between 60 to 100 beats per minute. If your temperature and pulse are consistently low, this is a sign that your metabolism is low. And if temperature and pulse fall after eating breakfast, this is a sign you're running off of the stress hormones, which we want to avoid. Many times when people suspect that they could have thyroid issues, their blood work comes back normal. And even though the lab work can look normal, this can be much different at the cellular level. This is known as subclinical hypothyroidism and is another reason that hypothyroidism is not recognized nearly as much as it should be. TSH is a common thyroid blood test, and the normal range is around 0 to 5, but this has changed a lot throughout the years. Ray Pete believed that under 1 and actually close to 0 is optimal, but TSH can still appear low even if thyroid function is poor due to suppression from cortisol and adrenaline. This is one of the reasons that TSH is not a definitive test of thyroid function. Total cholesterol is also a useful blood test for thyroid, as high cholesterol, usually in the mid to high 200s, is a reliable sign that the thyroid isn't converting cholesterol into the steroid hormones. Low cholesterol can also be an issue and is usually a sign of infection. In all cases, evaluating thyroid function by temperature, pulse, and symptoms is really the best way to get a useful view of metabolism. Some of the main contributors to hypothyroidism are stress, inadequate nutrition, most notably consumption of polyunsaturated fats, consumption of indigestible foods, low-carb diets, and lack of macro and micronutrients as dietary contributors. Also, a lack of stimulating experience, inadequate light exposure, and environmental stressors such as endocrine disruptors are other factors in contributing to hypothyroidism. Many of these factors are inherited from the mother, so ensuring adequate health during pregnancy is vital. Before experimenting with supplemental thyroid, I think making sure your nutrition is optimal with adequate protein, carbohydrates from easily digestible sources, sodium, magnesium, potassium, and calcium, B vitamins, most notably B1 and B3, vitamin C, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, gelatin from broth and or powdered form, and striving to improve digestion and liver function is vital. Implementing things such as raised carrot salad or well-cooked white button mushrooms, coffee, aspirin, coconut oil, cascara sagrada, and other safe pro-metabolic substances can be good places to start. One of the most common issues for people in a low thyroid state is the conversion of T4 into T3, and taking steps to support this conversion can be highly therapeutic. Some of the main inhibitors of this conversion are cortisol, estrogen, impaired liver function, polyunsaturated fats, and endotoxin. In essence, all of these factors are interconnected to stress. Activating the synthesis of bile acids is known to upregulate the conversion of T4 into T3. Taurine, pregnenolone, and progesterone are known to facilitate this, and selenium and zinc are also involved in the T4 to T3 conversion. So seafoods such as shrimp and oysters are beneficial for these nutrients. For some individuals, these interventions can be enough, but if improvement isn't seen, then a thyroid supplement should be considered. Almost anyone could benefit from thyroid, but it's definitely not something to take haphazardly. If a person doesn't understand the context of how to properly support a thyroid supplement, issues can arise 
this very easily, so ensuring that you have a solid understanding prior to beginning any supplementation is critical. Natural desiccated thyroid or NDT comes from the thyroid glands of pigs or cows and is the traditional method of supplementing thyroid hormone. NDT contains a ratio of T3 and T4 of around 1 to 4. One grain of NDT is approximately 60 milligrams. Two of the most reliable thyroid supplements are Sino Plus and Sino Mel, which are synthetic T3 and T4 combination and T3 by itself. One tablet of Sino Plus is 30 micrograms of T3 and 120 micrograms of T4, and one tablet of Sino Mel is 25 micrograms of T3. Using a pill cutter and milligram scale is advised to properly split up thyroid doses. Measuring doses by breaking up a tablet without a scale can work, but often this is extremely inconsistent. Experimenting with different brands and different forms of thyroid can be useful. Many often find that they do best as Sino Plus and Sino Mel. Supplementing a dose of around one microgram of active thyroid hormone or T3 chewed up with a meal can allow you to get a good clue of how you react to thyroid. Oftentimes with low metabolism, even a small amount of thyroid can be stimulating, so staying aware of your temperature and pulse can be important. Plenty of people can experience an adrenaline reaction from thyroid, at least temporarily, so having something such as magnesium on hand is extremely important to mitigate possible issues. Oftentimes a person will quickly adjust, but if thyroid causes prolonged rapid heartbeat or any other negative symptoms, the supplement should be stopped immediately and your gland will return to normal function over the course of several days or weeks. Thyroid doses should be split up throughout the day and chewed with meals. Doses of T3 with or without T4 should be no more than 10 micrograms, optimally around 5 micrograms to be considered physiological. Again, our body produces around 3 to 4 micrograms of T3 per hour. Many find benefit from using T3 by itself, since T3 is much faster acting than T4, but does require much more frequent dosing due to its short half-life. Taking consistent small doses of T3 throughout the day can be a good method to use. Often, many find that temporary implementation of T3 monotherapy, or even temporary T3 and T4 supplementation can have a noticeable impact in improving metabolism overall, but many individuals do find tremendous benefit from using thyroid long-term. T3 and T4 combination can be better than T3 alone long-term because T4 builds up over time and acts as a reserve. Starting with half a grain of thyroid, or approximately 5 micrograms of T3 and 20 micrograms of T4, and increasing by half a grain every two weeks until reaching optimal temperature is a good path to follow. Tracking temperature and pulse along the way. Adding additional small doses of T3 can also be helpful. T4's effects build up over the span of approximately two weeks, so it's important to stay at the same dose for at least two weeks before judging results and adjusting supplementation. When liver function is poor, which can be very common in hypothyroid individuals, supplementing with high amounts of inactive thyroid T4 in relation to T3 can actually impair the thyroid further, since a burdened liver can't as easily convert T4 into the active T3. The standard ratio of T3 to T4 is 1 to 4, but Ray Pete postulated that using combination of T3 and T4 of 1 to 3, 1 to 2, or even 1 to 1 may be more optimal or necessary to see improvement. Supplementing thyroid is extremely dependent on a person's context, and this is why it's important to be very rational and evaluate your own circumstance and history. Some individuals may thrive with half a grain in a warm, stimulating environment, but might need closer to one or two grains in a colder, more stressful place, especially with a deeper history of issues. According to Ray, most individuals won't need much more than two grains of thyroid, but in the words of William Blake, the true method of knowledge is experiment. Some frequently asked questions regarding thyroid. Will supplemental thyroid suppress natural production? T4 suppresses the endogenous production of thyroid hormone, but the thyroid gland actually returns to normal after a few weeks of ceasing supplementation. Many individuals have concerns about T4 suppressing their natural production, but in my opinion, if thyroid function is extremely poor after exhausting other means, there should be no concern with using supplemental thyroid to improve thyroid function, since you can always cease supplementation if you choose, and supplemental thyroid can even be used temporarily to facilitate improvement in your gland's natural function. Though many individuals do actually find tremendous benefit from using thyroid long term. What if I take too much thyroid? In the case of thyroid overdose, characterized by excessive temperature and rapid heartbeat, supplementation should be stopped immediately and avoided until the issue resolves. This is one of the reasons that titrating up thyroid dosage slowly is important. Isn't supplemental thyroid hormone unnatural? According to Ray Pete, the idea that supplemental thyroid is unnatural is not entirely accurate. Before the 1940s, people would naturally consume thyroid hormone in their diet, particularly from sources such as chicken or fish head soup, which would normally contain the thyroid glands of the animals. After 1942, laws changed and it was no longer permitted to include thyroid in the food supply, which led to reliance on supplements to obtain these hormones. Also, due to the overconsumption of polyunsaturated fats from our food supply, Ray views supplemental thyroid as a rational measure to support the metabolism along with other interventions to combat the anti-thyroid effects of PUFA. For individuals who don't wish to use thyroid hormone or have an intolerance, supporting thyroid with adequate nutrition, light exposure, a warm climate, and stimulating environment is what I would focus on. High altitude is stimulating to thyroid function due to the retention of carbon dioxide, so moving to a high altitude location could be therapeutic, but of course this isn't realistic in every situation. Also, anything that activates mitochondrial uncoupling or thermogenesis can be beneficial for metabolism.
mechanism. Essentially, uncoupling is a lower form of energy production, but due to the thermogenic or heat increasing effect, a person is able to see benefits to metabolism from this increase in heat production. Things such as caffeine can increase mitochondrial uncoupling, so coffee or any other form of caffeine can provide several effects in raising metabolism. As I mentioned previously, ensuring to consume coffee with enough nutrients, such as with a meal, milk, heavy cream, and or sugar is important. Also, aspirin in the range of 1 to 1.5 grams with an additional 500 milligrams added every 4 to 6 hours can induce uncoupling, and using 1 milligram of vitamin K per 325 milligrams of aspirin is advised to offset the blood thinning effects. If you're interested in healing your thyroid, digestion, or discussing any other bioenergetic ideas, I now offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and you can schedule a call by DMing me on Twitter or Instagram. Thank you for watching and to more energy.